While most walking tours are pitched at visitors keen to explore the nooks and crannies of a new city, this one is also aimed at getting locals to better understand their home. This is the opening night of Tucker and Nipaluna. It's Palo Akani for Walking Hobart. They have used our heritage to build their own. It follows the 1832 route of a group of 40 members of the Aboriginal resistance as they walked to the old government house to negotiate an end to Tasmania's Black War. The conflict included the infamous Black Line, where colonists tried to round up the Indigenous population, which had already suffered a devastating toll from disease, dispossession and violence. I think people would never think about um, Aboriginal dispossession as being the foundation of um, the country and wouldn't think about a 30-year sort of attempt at genocide removal of our people as to why these cities stand. The idea for Hobart's first Aboriginal-focused walking tour was sparked seven years ago. It was first run as part of the 10 Days on the Island Festival last year. Dramaturg Sarah Hamilton worked with Ms Sculthorpe Green on the tour's development. I think it's an incredibly generous act that she's doing this because she's had to um, process a lot of very sad history as well and she's incredibly generous in sharing that. As well as relating the past, the tour also looks at current activism. I didn't want to leave our story in the past. I didn't want it to be far away from where people are. I wanted to realise that our stories are here in the city, right here with us all the time, and they connect to us today. Despite being set on the streets rather than on the stage, Tucker and Nipaluna is part of the 2022 Theatre Royal season and will run regularly throughout the year. Like, none of me does this in such an honest and sensitive way. It's not about blame. It's about reconciliation and honesty and understanding and sharing knowledge. And I think as a cultural institution, that's our role. Exposing the city's dark foundations. Selena Ross, ABC News.